I want to take a moment right now. I, I have to tell you a, a story just to give you an idea of God's sense of humor. Some of you may have heard this story, but I, I, I'm going to share it with you uh, today. It's an absolutely true story. You're going to think I'm making this up. I promise I'm not. Has anyone here ever asked God for a sign? Be honest. You've asked God for a sign, right? We do that, don't we? God, will you give me a sign? Well, here was what happened with me. I was, I was really grappling with a decision. I was at a crossroads in my life. This was probably 20 years ago. I was at a huge crossroads in my life. I didn't know what to do. Career-wise, what I wanted to go into. Well, I was approached by some people that wanted me to go into this business with them. And I didn't want to do it. I said, like, ah, I'm not going to do that. Thanks anyway. I passed on it. Well, I felt this such a strong, it was almost an audible voice. Do it. You need to do that. And you know how sometimes when you, when you really are feeling something so strongly, you start going, wait a minute, God, is this you? Is this the Holy Spirit prompting me to do this? Because it was so strong. And I couldn't get past it. And day after day after day, I keep feeling this sense of, you need to do this. I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I'm like, Lord, is this you or not? Or is this, you know, some bad chili that I ate? Although there was no bad chili here last <laughs> night, just so you know, okay? Well, anyway, I'm really grappling with this because, can I level with you? I didn't want to get into that business. I didn't like that business. I, I didn't like what was involved in doing that business. I, I, I knew that I would hate it. So this is why it's like, Lord, is this really from you calling me into this? So I'm driving down 696 in Detroit, and I'm praying, and I'm like, Lord, uh, you know, if I know it's from you, I'll do anything. I'll go to Bangladesh. I don't care. If I, come on, if we know it's God, we'll do whatever he tells us if we know it's him. But I, I want to make sure. So I'm like, Lord, I need you to give me some sort of sign. I'm sorry. Call me a wicked and perverse generation. Do whatever. I just, I need a sign. I need you to do something for me to show me that this really is you calling me into this business. So I'm trying to think, what sign can I ask the Lord for? I'm driving down 696, and I'm like, what can I? And I'm like, well, God, you know, you could form the clouds to say, yes, Bob, this is me. And I'm like, but, <laughs> but again, I, I, left brain logical, I'm going, yeah, but God doesn't usually work that way. You know, he doesn't usually work that way where he gives you a sign that everybody else can also see. I'm like, okay, well, so he's not going to do sky writing. What would God possibly do? And I didn't want it to be something really lame either. You know, like, hey, the next light I get to, if it's a green light, Lord, then that means no, because it's, it could be coincidentally a green light. So here's honestly what popped in my head. I notice it's a clear sky. I don't see any birds anywhere. I'm driving down 696. Forgive me, folks, this is just the way that my sick brain works. Here's what I thought to myself. You've all gone out to your car when it's parked under a tree and seen like the bird dropping splattered on your windshield, right? We've all been there, okay? But if you think about it, that only happens when your car's parked under a wire, under a tree, something like that. It never happens while you're driving down the freeway. Now, your windshield will get hit by bugs and everything else, but never bird droppings. Because here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking the odds of this mathematically would be astronomical because my car is driving 70 miles an hour. A bird would have to fly overhead. A bird would have to release at just the right time, and everything would have to be perfect. I mean, think about that. So I'm like, I got it. Lord, would you please... <laughs> Just to give me a sign that this is from you. Would you have, while I'm driving 70 miles an hour on the freeway, will you have some bird dropping splat on my windshield? And then I go, well, wait a minute. Uh, what will that mean? Will that mean that, yes, this is you calling me into this? Or will that mean, no, this is not me calling you? So I go, okay, God, here's what we do. And honestly, folks, this is how I'm praying. I'm like, okay, God, take the windshield, let's cut it in half. The driver's side of the windshield... <laughs> If, if it's you calling me into this, then make it happen on the driver's side. And if it's not you calling me into it, make it happen on the passenger side. Okay, God, you have your instructions. Go. <laughs> and so now I'm driving. Nothing happened for about 10 minutes. And then about 10 minutes into this, 
and I'm just, I was heading westbound. I'm heading to 75 and now heading toward Greenfield and whatever. I see this big gray bird swoop out of the sky about eye level and he's flying straight toward me as though we're playing chicken. I'm not kidding. And it's a big gray bird. And I'm like going, oh, come on now. And, and he's heading straight for the car. And I'm like, Lord, I don't want the whole bird. I just want his dinner, okay? And so right before he gets to the car, he swoops up and he releases. And there's just no way for me to exaggerate how nasty this was, okay? Bam, right there on the driver's side of the way in front of me. And it was like huge like my hand. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I can't do the windshield wipers because it'll smear all over. So I'm having to drive like this to look around it. So anyway, I, and honestly, I know some of you are like, I bet you he's exaggerating this story. Honestly, I'm really not. This is exactly how it came down. I get home. I pull in the driveway. I go and I tell my wife, you are not going to believe this. You got to come and see this. She goes, what? What? And I go, come here. Look at this. We go out in the driveway and I look at the windshield and I go, she goes, what? And I said, look at this. God spoke to me today. Right? And I... <laughs> And so she's like, you know, you're not taking your medication, are you? And I said, no, 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 listen. So I tell her the story. And she says, wow, because she's a very logical, analytical person too. And she's like, you know, mathematically, the odds of that are astronomical. That's got to be God. And I said, you know, I think you're right. And, so, and here's what I did, because I resisted. I didn't want to do it. I still didn't want to do it because I, didn't, I hated the idea of going into this business. It's three days later. I'm driving down 696 again, and I'm praying, and I'm like looking for any wiggle room possible. I'm like saying, Lord, is it possible that this really wasn't you? Could that have just been a coincidence? Could it whatever like this? And I started thinking about Gideon. Remember Gideon, before he went into battle with the Midianites, he asked God for a sign. But then he also went to God afterward and said, please don't be angry with me, but could now could you do it exact in reverse, okay? Make the fleece wet uh, with dew in the morning and the ground dry and reverse it. And, well, you know, and so I go, Lord, you did it for Gideon. He asked you not to be angry with him. I asked you, please don't be angry with me. Would you be willing to do this just one more time, but this time make it happen on the passenger side instead of the driver's side? I didn't see the bird. I didn't see the bird this time. But it was about 10 minutes later, and I was just getting to 275, and right as I was getting about to 275 on 696, I suddenly, Pah! I look over, I go, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. I had to get into this business. Now, just so you folks know, at the time, I owned a sportswear company, okay? I, I had a deadly, deadly fear, a deadly phobia of something. Uh, and this was such a paralyzing phobia that I, I, there's nothing I could do about it. My phobia was public speaking. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, at our Christmas parties, I'm the president and CEO of the company. All of our managers and employees are there. When it comes time to address the employees, I used to have to have my vice president address them because I was that intimidated and scared to death to even speak in public. A microphone just scared me to death. This business was a public speaking business. I was forced going into this business to learn public speaking. Talking into a microphone just scared the death out of me. If you would have told me back then that what I'd be doing for a living is I'd be a nationally syndicated radio talk show host talking to people in a microphone every day, I would say it's absolutely impossible. But you know something? God knows us better than we know ourselves. And we need to be open to whatever God is calling you to. Don't you dare think, well, God can't use me here. God can't use me here. I know God can't use me for this. What can I really do? What can I accomplish? I don't have the skills. I don't have the talents. I don't have the... You have no idea what God can use you for if you'll just be open to it.